So welcome back, everyone. We're here now with uh, Hans Schiekan. And Hans and I have done a lot of shows <laughs> with the Global Investor Forum, bringing companies together, going to Boston, try to, to bring investors to, to, to the companies. And we've done a lot of, um, I would say, events together where we brought the companies in contact with corporates and investors. And so this is a new way of seeing Hans on the screen, me being here in San Francisco, but we keep on going, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, they can't, uh, you know, stop us. <laughs> so if for everyone who doesn't know, oh, Hans, sorry. I don't hear it, Deborah. You mute it. Uh, is this better? Yes. Is this better? Good. Now, I'm just saying it's great to be there and here at the same time. It's virtually impossible, but virtually it is possible. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Every crisis is an opportunity, right? So for the people who don't know Hans, um, Hans is a serial entrepreneur. Hans has been the CEO of Prozenza, uh, coming with the company all the way, going IPO in the United States. Uh, he is also the co-founder of uh, Farfaris, and Hans is involved in many, many different ways with many, many startups, and uh, also a very important uh, person for us as Health Holland, as the life sciences industry. So we're very happy to to have you here in the in the show, uh, Hans. And what I would like to talk to you about is your experiences and especially with Prozenza, uh, again, coming all the way, going IPO. Um, can you give the companies maybe an impression of what happened and some advice? Yeah, absolutely, Marianne. And I'm, if I go back again to 2013, I still remember vividly well, June 2013, when we had our IPO on NASDAQ, it was one of the most uh, exciting moments of my life, of my career, really. And any CEO who has that possibility to float a company, to list a company on the largest market with the, the, the deepest experience and professionalism, uh, which is NASDAQ for technology, do it, I would say, because it really brings back great memories. Uh, and not just because of the fact that there was a whole process going ahead of it, uh, before it, but also the mere fact that uh, we had to fly in a private jet, for example, to meet as many investors as possible. And the pilot coming in and telling me that just a week before Mick Jagger was sitting on my seat is something I will never forget uh, in that IPO process. But that's just on the side uh, track. We really built uh, in that moment a great team with the company. And, and people whom I'm working with today still in Favaris, and we're also at the same time in Presenza. So we went to quite right together and that is something for life right so you had the right team and it's all really exciting i can imagine being at nasdaq you know maybe it's the big dream of many of us who are on the show today the companies who are thinking about the united states and in this team was it did you integrate americans in your team or how did it work how did you become successful because it's not always easy yeah. Uh, to be here in the United States and be successful here. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's one of the most professional, if not the most professional life sciences markets, uh, also from a financial point of view. So you really have to, uh, to perform top notch. Uh, and we did try to hire the best possible people. Uh, we had a, a Swedish American CFO who had done it before, who had listed a company before. Um, we had, had a chairman of the board who uh, came from New Enterprise Associates, which also invested in a so-called crossover round about a year before we did the IPO. Uh, and he really opened uh, doors for us, which otherwise would have kept closed. Uh, and we hired many people in the US as well. Uh, so, uh, but being prepared, really going through the extra mile, visiting the US, we were there almost every month, I would say at a certain moment between the new enterprise associate investment and the IPO and thereafter as well. Late phone calls. It comes at a price, but it really can be very exciting and very good for the growth of your company. 
Yeah, and I think this is very good advice for everyone, eh? because you look at the NASDAQ and that's the moment, but it's all the preparations beforehand, like you were saying, being there every month, showing that you are there, that you show up. I think that's also a very American thing. You are there. It's not that you expect them to give you a call. And that's, that's so very, very important to be prepared, to find people you trust, so I think that, that that is something to really keep in mind. Already when you're starting to launch, right? At the moment, as the companies who are in the show. So um, what do you see as successful ways to scale in the United States? Because there's not one way, right? You went to the NASDAQ, but others do it in different ways. And I know you are in contact with many, many star startup scale-ups in mm -hmm you know, bringing them over to Boston, getting them connected. What are different ways to do it that yeah. you find yeah, interesting? I, yeah. Yeah, as we say, there are many roads leading to Rome uh, and not necessarily all have to go via either San Francisco or via Boston or, or New York where NASDAQ is located. But, but I still think my advice to almost every scale up and let's say grown up company where I'm on the board is to at a certain moment consider the possibility to get in U.S. investors. Uh, and it's not just because of their money, because that's one thing. The money from the U.S. or from Europe is the same, but it's really the network behind it. It's really the doors which otherwise stay closed. And it's also validation. On a moment that you have top-notch U.S. investors in your syndicates, uh, even if you're not uh, listed yet, if you're still private, it is uh, like like a, a hallmark of of good science and good team spirit and good good people in your in your team. So really make sure that you get the best possible people in your company, but also the best possible investors in uh, in your syndicate. And that often uh, includes U.S. investors as well. But again, there are more ways leading to Rome. Uh, I'm also on the board, or I was on the board of a company which uh, went for listing in Stockholm, or NASDAQ Stockholm, and they did very well as well. They were acquired by uh, Alexion. Uh, other companies are considering the possibility to go to NASDAQ or not. So there are many roads leading there, but my advice really would be consider it. It comes at a price, but do consider that option as well. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that you're saying it because it is possible. When you have good sciences and, and you've been on boards where you saw it happening, mm -hmm. if you have the good science, many of the US investors see us as a bit undervalued, eh, the companies from Europe. So if you are able to get the right people on board, you, you, you can make it, you can launch, you can get investors. If you put like, if you're willing to walk the extra mile, I think that's, mm -hmm. you have to show up and it's not going to yeah. be the other way around. But it's a long process, Marianne, because we started about a year and a half, two years in advance already by frequently visiting U.S. potential investors, even though we're not even thinking about an IPO yet. And only by the time that they told us, you really have to consider to list your company on NASDAQ, uh, then of course it became very serious. Uh, and we made use of consultants, as already mentioned by Ayn as well. So uh, but really two years ahead of time to start that process already. But I have to say in 2013, when we listed the company, uh, we were the first biotech company uh, in about 10 years time to have a primary listing on, on NASDAQ. Nowadays, it's far more common. But in those days, we it really felt sometimes like jumping into a a big black hole, what's going to happen to us and are we going to succeed? Because nobody wants to have a failed IPO. That's not good for your CV. Right. That's not good for your company. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So what are do's and don'ts, Hans, in this case? If you are yeah, yeah. stage of many yeah. of us, eh, of the companies scaling, success in Holland, yeah. but hey, this is the next step. Yeah, yeah. Well, the do's, uh, going back to the same theme, prepare, prepare, prepare. Make sure you really understand the U.S. market. Make sure you know how the scene looks like. Be prepared for every, every question they will ask. Uh, European investors tend to be, and I shouldn't generalize here, tend to be a bit more on the generic and the generalistic side. In the U.S., they will go and try to find out every single data set of your scientific data. 
every time we went to the US, uh, sometimes we were there for a week, then we went back three weeks in Europe, back to the US again. Every time we came back with new ideas and better insights in what we, uh, what we should look at and how we could do things better. So be prepared. That's the do, an absolute number one do. And don't, it's also a very important one, never overpromise. Never promise anything and then don't do it. That's detrimental. Uh, because at the moment, especially when you go for a listing in the U.S. Uh, and you submit your so-called F1, which is a document which you can also file uh, confidentially with, uh, with the SEC, then in that case, the investors, potential investors in your IPA will be looking at what did they change last time from the previous version. Uh, so if you first said you're going to start our clinical trial in Q1 2022, and then later on, you have to change that in Q2, that's not good. So don't overpromise, make it first half of 2022. Be on the safe side, not too safe, no sandbagging, but never overpromise. Yes, that, that is extremely good advice. And it's in a way, it's a combination of what you were saying, because if you come to the US, maybe long before you are planning an IPO or a market, real market launch, you get used to those people. You get used to these questions of investors. You learn, like you were saying, you went back home with new ideas, the company became stronger. So I also recognize it from the Global Scale Up program, the companies that come early, and I think Noel is, is for instance, an extremely good example. You start to, to build it, you learn, and then you are used to it. And you see sometimes mm -hmm. companies who are a bit more hesitant, mm -hmm. wait a little bit longer, mm -hmm. and then they come to the US for the big moment. And they are sometimes very disappointed if they sit down with investors mm -hmm. talking about their data and they thought they were doing a great job in Holland. So it's, it's extremely mm -hmm. good advice. You know, I, it's, it's, I think for all of us, this was already uh, extremely helpful. Uh, Hans, we could talk uh, for much, much longer, but we have to move on to uh, uh, the next, uh, the next uh, step, basically talking about the program. But I think it is really great to have you here uh, on the show, showing basically that it can be done and giving us all this advice. And also Noel and Aryan is of course great. There, there's their are steps. They are taking the steps that you took uh, as well. And so it can be done. I think that's, that, that is a real American lesson. It can be done. If you want it, it can be done. So maybe we should end there. And thank you very much, Hans, for, uh, for, all, for everything, for being here. Most welcome. And good luck with your show. Uh, great to be there and here at the same time. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> Bye, Hans. Bye. So... Let's talk about the program, everyone. What are we going to do uh, in the coming days? And Dirk already introduced it, that despite everything, we keep on going. We are the coming days gonna be in interaction with all of you to see how we can help you to launch your company in the United States to scale in the United States. And I would like to say a few words about the Global Scale Up program. Um, you know, many of you know the program, very much uh, uh, appreciate that we have been a real Health Holland program, the Scale Up program of Health Holland for uh, already a couple of years. So we started in 2012, bringing companies to the United States who would like to scale up. And the idea was always, it should not be an MBA type of program, but the global scale of program, we can go to the next slide, is really about your company. It's about your company. It's scaling your company. And what we know about scaling, sometimes we focus on investors. We need more money. We want to attract investors. But this slide is showing you that if you want to be successful, you have to scale at all levels. You have to scale, of course, financially, but you also have to scale your leadership skills. You are entering another world. And that's really my experience being here for a longer time. The US is a different world. We think we are like the Dutch and the Americans, but it's different. 
And it's important to realize it. It's important to hear the lessons that we heard. Be here, come here, be introduced. And the Global Skill Program is the first real in-depth uh, introduction to uh, contacts. Next slide. Next slide. So um, it's always based uh, on uh, getting the right contacts and assessments of your company. So this time with the digital mission, the focus is really on building the network and having some webinars with the most typical, uh, I would say, underdeveloped topics uh, um, when we talk about scaling. And I will say a few words more about it. Um, but it's really about your company having mentor interactions to learn how they perceive from a US perspective your company. So you have to get out of your comfort zone and face the music with the Americans. Next slide. So it is all about, uh, you know, speeding up your journey to market. And again, I'm very happy that we do it together with consulate because this is really an opportunity to uh, cover the whole West Coast, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Arizona. And most of you who know me know that Boston is also, uh, you know, a well-known, uh, you know, haven, if you would like to speak in uh, Dutch terms, for me and, and, and for us, uh, also as the Netherlands. Next slide. So what can you expect now? We would like to introduce you to a lot of people, eh, like Dirk was saying, in the different regions. These are really network contacts. It's not an in-depth assessment that we would have when you would be here, but we are going to connect you. And I think that's very uh, you know, important as we heard from uh, the experienced entrepreneurs. Next slide. So what are we going to do today? Today, we are going to talk about KOLs, key opinion leaders. And all of you, I know all of you uh, who are part of the show already have KOLs uh, in the Netherlands, maybe globally. But what about KOLs in the United States? Well, what we know is if you would like to scale in the United States, you need to have KOLs here in the United States. And we are going to talk about it um, with extremely experienced people. I'm, I'm very happy uh, to uh, introduce in a little bit uh, two great people who will really give you in-depth, um, you know, a vision of how to do it. Then we will fly, as Dirk said, to Arizona. There we meet the ACA, the Arizona Commerce Authority. And they are really, um, you know, in Dutch we say, spin in het web. They know everybody in Arizona. And Arizona is super attractive because of their hospital system, very well connected. And so day three, you will also meet a lot of people from the Mayo Clinic, which is very interesting. So what we will do with ACA is that we will have two founder roundtables. So we'll talk about raising capital here in the United States and landing your company. So all in all, please feel free to uh, ask all your questions in the chat on MentorJam. I think that's very important. Whatever you want to ask, ask it, and I will make sure that the questions get to the right people. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Michael Picorillo. And Michael is um, he's a veteran in his field. Um, so uh, Michael, the floor is yours. 